Welcome to the Media Bubble Podcast. I'm Fredrik, he's Carol, and in today's episode we're going to talk about Ghost in the Shell. Uh, the first m- movie from 1995 and the second film from 2004, Go- Ghost in the uh, I think it was 2007, if I remember correctly. Let me check uh, my no, notes. No, I don't think seven. I think... Uh, Already fact-checking things here. 2005, that's the correct date. Okay, so 10 years later for the sequel. (laughs) Anyway, (laughs) just as a comparison, uh, we also will not, we will not be covering Ghost in a Shell, I think, because there, there are two versions of the first movie. One, which we saw, the original one, and the second one, I think the one that added, like, it was released few years after, more 3D... Do you mean the live-action version? No, 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 not the live-action version. Just a, like a like a retouching of the first one with more orange filter, more little little scenes, and a lot more 3D CGI. Mm. Uh, let's just be honest here. We have just watched the Ghost in a Shell movie uh, from 1995 and its sequel. We haven't read anything of the ma- manga. Uh, anything of the uh, animes that has come out we have just watched those two films that, that's kind of that's kind of all we know about the ghost in the no. shell I always want to say ghost in a shell no 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 no. I think you're forgetting we also saw each of us individually the live action one no I haven't seen the live action one you haven't? oh uh, well why would I? it's I mean, if okay, if you have seen the, these ones, I think it'll be bad. But on like a clean slate, since I haven't seen the the original movies before before seeing the live action ones, it was okay. It's just that the the the, the animes are better. Yeah, that's kind of the uh, everything that everyone always said about the live action film. <laughs> I, I I guess so. It's it's not an unpopular opinion. Uh, but, but yeah, g- the ghost in the, uh, as I said, I always kind of want to say ghost in a shell, but it's ghost in the shell. It, 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 just, it just sounds li- like better wi- with the tongue to say ghost in a shell. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, but uh, skipping the semantics, uh, ghost in a, we start with ghost in a shell one. And it opens as our main character major who is a, a cybernetic not cybernetic she's a she, she's a cyborg uh, she is mm. the titular ghost in the shell uh, she Spoiler warning <laughs> <laughs> i guess yes uh, for each of the movies uh, she is uh, absolutely naked titties flying in the air uh, on the top of a building for everyone to see um uh, and she is outside a building uh, prepping for an assassination of a foreign official uh, that is trying to give an asylum to, to a scientist. And quick, just, I... I, I sometimes... guess there wasn't that much need of uh, fan art for this film. Yeah. They, they kind of just delivered it on their own. <laughs> like, everything is up to see. And I remember watching this because... In a, it, it kind of tones down the, 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 the nakedness as the movie goes along. But in the beginning, it's very obvious. It's kind of just in the beginning, if you're being honest. Yeah. But still, I have kind of wanted to pre-watch the movie uh, because I have sometimes a little bit of time off at work. So I started watching it. And I'm just like, nope. <laughs> I cannot have the, these titties in the office. I cannot explain myself to my co-workers. This is staying yeah, at home. Yeah, just, so, just someone coming I- into the door and, Carol, what are you watching? Yeah, th- that's what I wanted to avoid. <laughs> it was like those uh, the, the Simpson meme with, with uh, Smithers uh, just like averting his eyes from the strippers. Uh, yeah, but uh, Ghost in a Shell, I guess you can explain that Ghost in a Shell, it's kind of in a world with... It feels a bit... A bit w- well, because it's like, it kind of like is the world of 1995, but with robots and some a little bit more advanced technology. But yeah, there's a lot of, there's 
our main character, the major, uh, she is kind of a full cyborg, and then the other police that she was working is with has rob has like I guess they started as human but got more and more replacement part that was from technology. Yeah. So Major has two uh, there there are also two uh, two other characters, significant characters in the movie. Namely Bateau, uh my god I hope I say his name correctly, who is this human who, who like he works for the section nine, he has a lot of chrome metallic parts installed most noticeably his eyes uh, he, which he uses to like see invisible clothing or analyze situations uh, the second person is Tonkusa so he is the everyday policeman that was scouted by Major to the section 9 it was kind of shows because he was kind of normal in some way yeah as Major said later in the movie uh, they didn't want to over specialize. They needed a fresh perspective. That's why they took uh, Yo uh, Togusa on board on the team. Uh, but anyway, uh, Major is responsible for the death of the official that wanted to grant the asylum to previously said scientist. That was illegal. Um, and afterwards, they reconvene at Section 9 to investigate another incident. The incident is being that uh, foreign, affa uh, foreign Affairs Minister has also a, uh, a, a bot and she is responsible for interpretation, uh, but she was hacked by a mysterious individual called the, pu the Puppet Master. Yeah, that's kind of the case of this whole film. Yeah, it's to... Uh, the, the whole mystery is who is the Puppet Master? Because he is resp responsible for international incidents, uh, terrorist threats, uh, ca casing information, everything from A to B, he, they are responsible for it. And it's currently in section 9, so uh, it's uh, our main character's problem now. Exactly. Um, and as the team is investigating how they were able to connect, because the, the assistant was hacked by a telephone line. So they are uh, investigating telephone lines throughout the city. Uh, the, puppet, the puppet master is using garbage men to connect the telepoles to, the, to his network so that he can have an, an easier access. And uh, that gives to Chase, since the Section 9 could, was able to trace the signal to said telephone booths. Uh, it's very tragic because turns out none of the people involved kind of know what they were doing. I and the one of them at least, like I don't know if the other was really uh, on to what the other one was doing, but yeah, the the other one had uh, memories replaced, I guess. Yeah, both of them. Uh, well, I mean the garbage man because there were two in the car. But one of them, the one that talked about his family and how much he misses and the reason for why he helped some kind of hacker was because he said that he has a daughter that his, her, yeah, that his wife was taking custody of and this was his mm. payback. But the problem is that never happened because his memories were altered. He had a simulated experience. Yeah, his uh, daughter and... Uh... Uh, wife never existed. Yeah, and it's uncurable. Like there was he... someone that put that into his mind, and because of that, he was easily manipulated like a puppet. Kind of the theme of this film. <laughs> yeah, like just being used by other people. I think it's a it's a big theme in this movie. Um, yeah, I, and... gu I guess this film is very philosoph philosophical. Uh, philosophical. Philosophical. Uh, thank you. And uh, the, this is kind of also one point in the that where uh, you start start to to que question: Is your memories really re real, or th things that has happened to you in before? And if, if I'm be, being uh, honest, like I don't, I don't really li like a lot of these philo ph philosophical questions. That uh, thank you, Carol, again. That uh, no problem. The, I guess this film kind of sta started and continued with other films. Like this film, yeah, apparently was a major 
inspiration for the Matrix and I, I, I just I guess also a lot of modern films also want to go into like that oh deeper soul kind of t- theme like I feel like that is becoming more and more a thing in movies today and I don't really like it if I'm being honest I mean I think I, I don't think that's necessarily anything bad it's just that you don't prefer this kind ki- this type of thread I, I don't I don't like to go into that part of of the the head I kind of just like being I- in reality and wh- where you are and this is the reality I know I don't need to think about oh if if there's something ad- other exists and something controlling you be uh, you just no this is my my rea- yeah, reality I don't want to get those thought in my, thoughts in my mind yeah because uh, I feel like I mean but do you feel like you don't enjoy this movie I mean from what I understand it's because you know this is a purely theoretical and therefore you don't have to like you don't want to waste time thinking about it or is it because you feel maybe if you started thinking about it you would become more worried and more stressed a, a bit of mix of both like like I don't I don't really feel like I, I remember one time also watching Inception I, and I got the weirdest dream like two days after and I, I didn't really enjoy, enjoy that feeling and I, I just kind of feel like I, I, I'm I'm in this life this is the life I, I know I don't really need, need to I don't really feel the need to to explore these ideas. Tho- those thoughts and uh, and tho- those tho- thoughts are a bit I I don't I don't know they uh, I I I just don't enjoy, enjoy it. Uh, I'm not sure if it makes me scared. I I don't think it may makes me scared, but but I don't know. There's just something about that that makes my my head a little bit uh, weird. Where are you? Yeah, kind of, I guess. Because for me, I kind of like and I, I, I kept thinking uh, about the movie after I've seen it, because like yeah, like I, I, I kind of like pondering like, what does make like what what how do you define human? Because in this movie, you cannot define a human by their memories, because these memories can be easily accessed by other. They can be manipulated. They can be stored. They could be altered. They could be deleted. Kind of like a like like kind of like a robot, so uh, they what, are robots. Yeah, but even human like that, that just that just means they're closer to robots than we usually think. And how would I react if I realized my memories were fabricated? Because like you can't change that. It's explained later in the movie. You can like it's highly experimental to ever recover your memories. Mm. And it's and it's like. Are these memories any less real? Like any any more fake because of that? Like they're fake. But this person have has lived through these memories. Like this man truly like this man has lived these memories. So they're real for him. It's so interesting to me. I I I'm I'm not, I have I have seen movies with this kind of philosophical theme before, so I guess it wasn't really uh, something so new for me, but uh, I, I I guess it's the kind of point of the film because our main character, the major, she is she is uh, just a robot, and she the things that she ponders in this film is does she see she have a soul even that she is just machine? Yeah, I mean, going back to major, and even going back to plot. Uh, talking about major, so uh, going back to plot, um, after the chase and the two culprits, the garbage man and the courier, they're, they're, with their memories fabricated, we turn to to major, how she spends her time her time alone, and that's where we learn more about her. Since it turns out she ponders a lot about her mortality, she likes to get in touch with the feelings of 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 being scared of being frightened of being un- unsure when she, she takes a lot of swims yeah i mean she's a bot so she works so she weights like 230 300 kilos 
So her nighttime activities, which is diving, could be deadly, but it makes her feel more alive. And it kind of goes back to her, to the earlier montages, which I said were like with a lot of pity, like of how she was being born. And it ties to her feeling trapped in what she is and her imagining how would she like how and she even says like how she how she sometimes dreams of becoming someone else when resurfacing to the uh, to the to the surface. Mm-hmm. It's it is because like yeah it like she says it but it's also really shown about this like because she was born once rising from the surface getting her skin and it's just this 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 the depths just symbolize kind of like another way like she could imagine this other life for herself because this one she can't escape yeah because if she quits the or this uh, work she what, what 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 was it that they said in the film that she she will get her memory yeah uh, gone so because of the work that major and uh, bato do they work for section 9 so because of that a lot of their bodies are augmented with super strength better healing a cybernetic brain um, access to a wide like a, a police network if if they were to leave they have to leave all that behind their cybernetics the everything their abilities everything that makes them them and for major well she's a cyborg so she has to leave her body she has to leave like she, all what she has is just her brain and maybe even that is not not sure like even her memories or property of section 9 of the government so she'd have to leave all that behind just to be free but without all of her parts her body her brain her memories what is what is she what, what is there left that was kind of a long yes if i'm being honest yes sorry i just like i i, I like to ramble on yeah i'm noticing that um but yeah um after this so scene, uh, yeah i i guess the, also in this film there's uh, some uh, uh, musical segments uh, that keeps popping in a little bit here and there to kind of create a feel for this world i think yeah i think it's it's a it's the chase when we see the slums or the the barge scene when uh, major is going through town imagining her life that we see just the world without any words i gotta say that this film is all, all with exception of those musical segments this film is very focused on like uh, go going straight to to its story and the what they are t- trying to they are trying to capture the pup, puppet master and yeah 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 and i like that because it doesn't waste your time it has a story to tell but it doesn't also it also has a visuals to tell so i guess if we're moving a bit a bit on how 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 was it is now now when i think about it they found this ma- machine of another girl robot yes so the robot assembled itself at a i think it was factory and with that it ventured out in the street and got hit by a truck um as the robot is being examined in the section nine it turns out that section six is, is, is suddenly coming in proclaiming that they have finally found they have finally found the puppet master and uh, they have killed his real body and uploaded the scan of his brain into the bodies that they have that the section nine now has um and because of that, they are taking over the investigation and they should be just let, left alone with the body. Yeah, this is kind of also where uh, the puppet master reveals himself in that uh, uh, wo- woman body. Yes, um, exactly. And they proclaim that they are a sentient being, they know their rights, and they claim asylum. Even though this is just a lo- like a long shot. Nobody will help them. Um, and... Uh, I don't know if it was revealed later or was it now. I think as the investigation into the puppet master begins and the uh, section six is trying to take the body, suddenly an attack happens on the HQ and the the robot body is reclaimed 
by no one else but Section 6. At this point, because of uh, Tusabas, the policeman's investigation, we learn that there were some shenanigans going on. And uh, by exposition, Section 6, handling the international affairs, had created the Puppet Master, an AI or a program to be a scapegoat for whatever they want overseas or, interna or, in, or, or in the country. Internationally or, or in home, at home. Uh, they can just have a, like a super hacker, they blame stuff on him, and when times are dire, they can swoop in and do whatever that, what they were doing out in the beginning. Um, a perfect puppet. But the problem is, they didn't account on the puppet breaking loose and going into the Section 9 build, like getting transported into Section 9. Basically, the goal for the Puppet Master was to get in touch with Major because he admired her. He spied on her. He wanted to, to get to know her. He found her interesting. Exactly. Um, and as the rising action, we unravel these mysteries, who did what and why it's connected. Because it is connected. Because we learn, scientists from the beginning, he was responsible for creating the Puppet Master. And he was, uh, I, think, I think he was employed underneath the assistant to the Section 6 director who was at the place talking with the, with the robot. So there just was this like huge net of people connected to Puppet Master. One, one, one thing that I feel like I can give some criticism about this film is that when, when they are giving uh, information ab about the story, sometimes I just feel like information, uh, a lot of important information come up at you so fast that it was kind of hard sometimes to uh, keep up with what wa was was going on yeah i agree like i had to because when i when i look at the movie for the podcast i usually take some notes and major events just like step by step mm. and only through reading those notes i try i like i got a grip on the story because at the first i like you have to th you have to think about it mm. I like like this 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 film is really hard to keep track on. Yeah, like it's not hard to understand. It's just that there's a lot of things going on. A lot of I I important information that co comes at you really fast suddenly. Yeah, uh, but it keeps you on your toes. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't make the film boring. It feels like rising tension. You know, there's always something going on. Um, mm. but section six uh, seals the puppet master. They switched car, uh, get Baidu and Tegusa on a wild chase around the city, but Major finds the Puppet Master in an abandoned fishing facility that's been flooded. Like a, like a, like a, like a museum, I feel it was. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, she approaches the building on a helicopter, and once she gets inside, she is being ambushed by an invisible tank that is starting to blast with its smithereens. She dodges, she weaves, she contacts uh, uh, Bateau, uh, th that is on the way, but anyway, she she really tries to fight this tank, invisible, it's so, it looks just so cool, the whole, the entire yeah, fight the animation scene. part uh, in, in that sequence was really special, I can say that. Yeah, like, big meaty chunks flying to bits, the weight of the body of the android, uh, also, all the muscles, the muscles just being torn to shreds as Major is trying to open the tank unsuccessfully. Cool is like the the proper way to describe it. Just the meatiness of the action. And uh, as Major is losing, uh, ba Bateau swipes in and finishes off the tank. What we are left with is Major trying to hack into Puppet Master to try to understand him better. Uh, as the helic as the enemy uh, as the section six helicopters are swooping in, Major hacks into Puppet Master, and she's being cornered because the Puppet Master is not dead. He's very much alive, and he wanted to meet her personally. He proposes that the two merge into one being and spread off their seed children into the internet. Uh, but Puppet Master, he he didn't want it to be a scapegoat. Mm. And he, well, he kind of explained that the merge was that they they would still uh, e e exist, but 
No, it, was, it was a bit, bit of a w- w- weird because it was like w- you you still will be you. You will lo- lose a few par- parts, but you will still be you. You and I will still be me, or something like that. I think it was an. I mean, he kind of used an allegory because it was like the programmer was very smart, but it was not human. As he said, he couldn't like reproduce, and he couldn't really taste death because he could just replicate couldn't sire an actual child because children have variations and a copy is just a copy but because he merged with major it was kind of them coming together and creating new life through this new program that major became because she's not the same person yeah she's that's something kind else of also. Mm. and so the two of them start merging section six is on the tail they start blasting the butts are blown to smithereens and we wake up with Major stuck in a new body, in a new shell, at a safe house with Batu in the room. Turns out, both, both, of the, both Puppet Master and Major are presumed MIA, or killed in action. And this is the only body he could get a hands on, he gets his hands on, to, to save Major from, from being erased. And the film ends there, with Major being free from her cinet- from her kinetic body, being reborn as she wished into being some something else, someone else. Yeah, I guess she was kind of pronounced dead after that. Yeah, like they couldn't recover her. Like it was just chunks of of metal. Yeah, uh, it was just her head. And it is, and as we said, it kind of isn't Major anymore. Yeah, as because she's a combination. She, yeah, like the movie, like. As she was merging with the Puppet Master, it was angelic, like, as as he explained, like, you you as you are right now will, are not able to comprehend what will happen to you, but you will see it as light. So, she, mm. like, he kind of ascended her into another being. Okay. So, um, what do, did you feel about this film, Carol? Um, I felt like the themes were strong. It was, what is a human... What does differentiate uh, what does differentiate us from humans and being a puppet because major until the very end couldn't escape until she died and kind of lost almost everything but became like after she became a new person she achieved what she wanted I wanted that for her I was happy uh, I will say that this film this is a very very good 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 film like the there are some parts like I still w- would have wanted a bit more development of me major and a bit more explanation on things that's going on sometimes. But I will still say that this is a re- really good fi- film, good animation for the ta- time and uh, uh, strong uh, teams that may- maybe even thought I t- even thought if uh, even if I don't maybe uh, like those teams it it was still made in a good good way and i don't really feel like they go too deep into it for it for it to feel like uh, like a hard movie to watch yeah yeah like like i feel like it it uh, strays on on that l- line but the, I, as i said i don't feel like it goes too deep in into it so uh, normal people can still enjoy it like it's a really good film and i can Kind of see what the, why it has become as a classic as it has. Yeah, I agree, and it's like as you said, it's it's. You, if you don't want to, you don't have to think about it to have a good time. It's a good movie regardless. The shots, the music. W- one thing that may maybe I should should say is that uh, these two films were a rewatch for for me because <laughs> maybe this is a criticism or whatever, but. I couldn't really remember what happened the first time I watched these two films, so I had to rewatch them for because I, I uh, and when I rewatched, uh, I realized that I really didn't don't remember a lot of stuff that happens. But I can't blame you because you said the subject matter doesn't really interest you that much. So I like why would you remember that? Hmm, maybe. Okay, now we're on the next film, Ghost in a Shell 2, Innocence. Innocence. And uh, this film switches a bit of things around because uh, this isn't a canon sequel from what I can understand it. 
the same director from the first film, film kind of making a sequel to that film. But this is, from what I can understand, this is very loosely based on, on, on the ma manga. This, from what I can understand, this isn't really what happens in it. And it also stars, uh, uh, it doesn't star the major anymore like the first one did. It stars her uh, friend. Uh, uh, Bateau. Yeah, ba Bateau. Uh, so, uh, do you want to explain a bit what happens, Carol? Yes. So, as you mentioned, uh, the, uh, the the star of the of this movie becomes Bateau as he... Um, Bateau is the main protagonist as Major has been declared missing for a good time now. Um, his partner is Nautobusa and the two of them are still working for Section 9. Uh, the movie here is way more philosophical as it's there are frequent mentions or quotes from the Bible, from philosophers. Just, just, just a lot more wordy. Um, mm. we, we, I, but, I can certainly agree on that. But at least we have more insight into Bateau. Uh, after he was, after his work, uh, he goes home. He has a routine where he pets, where he feeds his lovely, lovely, cute, super cute dog treats and food, and he just seems like a regular guy after work. But um, we learn that the boys have a new case, namely uh, personal bots uh, reactivate or activate, and they kill the and they kill the own they kill their owners. Um, the latest one is a bot. A, that was probably a sex bot that killed its owner and tried to commit suicide afterwards which is well weird because bots they usually try to abide by the third law of robotics which is guarantee its own safety uh, the boys head to a mortician mrs howardaway uh, who explain the situation to them as it wasn't clear that this bot was uh, was a sex bot but it is it, it and it was very expensive she uh, rambles on well it was uncommon to say uh, there's a major conversation about uh, how robots are really close to humans and how many of the robots break once their owners decide to get rid of them and go in for the latest new tech uh, probably the reason for why the bot attacked uh, and uh, she doesn't blame him she doesn't blame the bot for doing that um Big information, the bot, the geisha, uh, she exclaimed, help us, help us, as she was being killed. Uh, the boys then are looking for information about who produced these robots and who was the victim. Uh, turns out another person was killed by in a similar situation. Uh, they were first shot and then their body was dismembered and put in the fridge piece by piece. Uh, the police are not looking for sharing information. But the boys are still able to find uh, at least a connection to the Yakuza. Uh, a next thread to look for the culprit. Probably a hacker uh, that left the Section 9 a long time ago. Uh, as the boys are asked to uh, to handle the Yakuza, uh, they, uh, Batu promises Togusa to not kill them, which he fails as the boys are very quickly uh, the, the Yakuza draw the guns, they're being shot at uh, but Bato just eliminates, absolutely murders them all with a minigun uh, or a, yeah or a Uzi, everyone is dead there's just a fight breaks out uh, the boys also find the culprit behind the second murder uh, there were lots of uh, evidence pointing out a robot or someone with a mechanical arm like a claw and they find the person uh, after a fantastic fight uh, and uh, it was really nice chore choreographed uh, the uh, section 9 boys are then sent to look after a hacker called Kim who has a fondness for puppets uh, in the meantime uh, lots of uh, 3D rendered backgrounds are presented to us. There's an there's a Chinese festival. Uh, this this movie really relies on the 3D technology for a lot of its backgrounds. Um, uh, one mention of note: uh, 
Bateau, as he's being, uh, as he bought, buys the treats for his dog that can be only buy, bought in this one place, he was hacked. Uh, namely, uh, he his his ocular technology was hacked. He started to see things, and he shot himself in the arm four times and tried to attack attack the shopkeeper to create a scandal for Section Nine. Um, that is explained later, but at this moment, uh, they were wondering why only why 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 did he only cause why did why didn't he shoot himself in the head instead of in the arm? Uh, so, the boys, after getting information from the Yakuza, killing everyone, then Bato staging a problem at the convenience store, are heading towards Kim's place. Um, Kim is, uh, as they enter from whatever place, they enter a big sprawling mansion, uh, a doll awaiting Bato at the entrance with seemingly a cryptic hint. Uh, they, me they meet the doll maker who pretends to be dead, but is not really. Uh, him being so engrossed in dolls that he believes dolls to be a superior being to humans. Uh, he, he he talks about why people are scared of dolls, because it's a reflection of humanity, because if it were to be alive, it would simply mean that our human lives are nothing more, no more but dolls, and it would be meaningless, yada, 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 a lot of philosoph philosophy and food for thoughts. Uh, nevertheless, the boys are sucked into this nightmare as the uh, as Kim is a hacker extraordinaire and hacks them, uh, giving them simulated experiences, reliving uh, nightmares from them entering the house, altering the situation uh, three times. Uh, but because of the hint from a guardian angel, Bato could figure out what was happening. And he used this to his advantage to get close to Kim the hacker uh, so that he himself could hack into his uh, cybernet cybernetic brain and extract the information. Whew. <laughs> Man, you went into a lot of details there. I, as I said, I have not. Uh, like, I, like I, I was trying to uh, sometimes pop, pop in, but you... Where, where did you even breathe in all that? You you went like straight four minutes summary. <laughs> I am sorry. Did at least did, did, was it comprehensible or was it just me j blabbering on? Uh, kind of both. Oh no. Well, I mean, is there like, anything like something you'd like to that add? I'm something that I kind of uh, I'm not sure if it just yes, me, but something that I noticed is that that sometimes you go. <laughs> You have these monologues and you go maybe a bit too into detail. I, I don't know, know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. But yeah, I think I think it's because in the first movie, I went through my notes and I had like an idea what I want to say. But here I didn't prep. I didn't second scan my notes from the second movie. Yeah. So it's a little bit something that Something that I think I have realized with this movie is I liked some of the scenes in the beginning for pa part before they, uh, I guess, tra travel to this place to find Kim. Uh, I was kind of okay, okay with, with, with that, but after that I realized uh, that I, tr I don't think I like this film, if I'm being honest. Me neither. I I... If, 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 if I said that I have a problem with the kind of phil philosophy... Why have a problem with that word? Uh, Philosophical. Yeah, yeah, th those kind of things in the in the first one. Then this film <laughs> takes that to another level. Uh, like even with some of the qu qu quotes that the characters spr uh, say uh, throughout this film. And th there's also is a song that is played in like the, the second for half of the fil film it i think it was in the original also but it kind of is a song that is supposed to create this kind of feeling of uh, what you're supposed to feel in these scenes but the, the thing is it, it isn't a very pleasing song to listen to and when uh, you they kind of repeat it for like the fifth or uh, sixth time it starts to get a bit annoying yeah i agree and also, I feel like 
this movie because it's it's a movie from 2005 as i said we had robots rock stars and chicken little so it really tried to it really relies on the 3d backgrounds and okay the environments are beautiful they still hold up but nothing really happens when we are shown this it's just i'd rather like like the whole chinese festival scene it looks beautiful I don't know what it added to the movie. What did it add? As I said, it's supposed to add some kind of feeling, but as I said, that song gets kind of annoying after a while. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, maybe it was like mysticism. Like even in the future, people are still really into mm. like festivals. Yeah, and and then there's this scene where they they meet this robot Ken and. He kind of put them into a, a trance where they go into the d dreams of the same scenario again and again. And uh, uh, while Ken, Ken I, I guess, is trying to creep more into their mind. And uh, one, one of the characters then, then asks, oh, 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 are we sure that we are out? Well, uh, I guess so. Yeah, like... I guess we are, <laughs> but also like, I get I get the feeling. Yeah, yeah, okay. It was supposed to be, like, even the castle. As I said, they were reliving the, the same dream, and a lot of the visuals were really cool. But some of the visuals were just too much. Like, not even too much. Just there was, like, I kept, I started to get bored because of the visuals. Like when they were mm. walking through the castle, and they were like, oh, a a burning table with people on it. And like, wow, okay, like it looks pretty, but it's just too long. Focus on the story, please. It it's n isn't as snappy, like two thirds of the movie, nothing happened. Mm. Like it was very slow. Well, uh, well, they kind of finally get to Ken because uh, uh, Badu uh, wasn't a fool. <laughs> but Balu. What is his name again? <laughs> Batu. But a uh, Batu. But who wasn't the? Uh, uh, he got kind of a mission, mission from the uh, ma mayor throughout these kind of dre dreams. So he kind of figures out that this wasn't re reality, and uh, yeah, they kind of uh, I guess put a stop to Ken and his uh, kind of philo philosophical ideas of uh, puppets and uh, yeah, because I mean he was just. It was a monologue. I, I feel like it was just him messing with mess, messing with, with the boys. Like, let me monologue and let me just torture you for, for how much I want. Mm. Uh, but going back to the plot, we learn that the puppet used in the first attack with the geisha, it was produced in an offshore robot building facility. Top clients, top of the model bots. And that's where the boys are supposed to go uh, once they're free. Um, in the meantime, Tsugusa says, like, yeah, I can't be your partner. I have a wife and kids. Uh, so that's hanging in the air. Also, Tsugusa says a lot of, like, I have a ki daughter and a child, and, I'm, and I cannot do this anymore. Like, fine. You don't have cybernetics. You can just leave. Um, uh, they, when they go to the ship, they are being transported to the ship. And as they enter, a lot of the bots start a self-defense program. Attacking all the boys at the same time. The, the security of the place is being slaughtered left and right. Heads flying off the wall. Blood just spl like splattering in chunks. Um, and we finally have Major coming to the scene. Um, yeah, she's finally back. Yeah, so Major being in the internet, she can connect to any device. And followed Batu throughout his life. Giving him hints in the castle. Giving him hints in the convenience store. And she uploads herself into one of the bots, attacking, uh, and helps out Batu with, yeah, just getting to the to, to the to, to, to the bottom of this. Um, and as they go chopping and fighting through this place, Major uh, uploads herself to the ship's uh, computer, releasing all the bots from control, and they understand that this whole. This whole 
situation was caused because the geishas were in like they had they had souls they had traces of souls and it was because the company was kidnapping children with the bots putting them into like computers brainwashing them and scanning their brains to infuse the bots with like with souls and mm. the children understood that and there was this, this is, and the detect, the detective from the beginning there was another murder he was looking into the disappearances that's why he was killed so he contacted the children somehow and and the kids came up like oh if we do a lot of bad stuff as the bots then surely the police will have to notice right and that's what they did but the problem is the geishas they had souls so in a way the children manipulated the bots with conscience and souls into murdering against their will even though they were being brainwashed and Bato is like why didn't you think of the bots and the children are like yeah but I didn't want it to be a brainless child like why do you are screaming at me it's all weird and yeah and yeah the case is solved the children are free uh, the, the the ship is pulling into like is being per pulled into like land, and major disappears, and uh, yeah, and we go back to. Batu is re re the ending of the film is Batu reuniting with his dog, and we finally get to see the, the daughter kid. that has been speaking about the whole film. Yeah, and she has a doll in her hand, just like the dolls were used for the sex slave. And they have mm. equally bright blue eyes. Yeah. And and really, all the dolls really different from humans, if they mm. have souls or not. <laughs> like, uh, like if I'm going to be honest, like I barely remembered something from the first one. Like watching the second one again, I realized I don't remember a single thing, with the exception of some of the U-boat stuff at the end. Yeah, like if I didn't have notes. I don't think this movie will be as rememberable. Yeah, even even the way they talk, which is that kind of philosoph uh, that kind of philosophical way, but it kind of is that that it happens so much that you're kind of like, well, what what was even some of the dialogue in this film? Yeah, because then because it is weird. Like the first one had a lot of quiet moments on the boat when Major is talking to Botto, like. Why do you go diving that night? And like, why can't you quit? And like, Major is avoiding the question. Same thing when she comes back from being dead. It was it was intense. But here, it's just characters talking at each other all the time. Like, co like quoting the Bible or like philosophers. Uh, like, like it gets to su such a point that it's kind of like. I'm having a hard time here. Yeah, because like, I guess uh, it's just like, give us a moment to like, the thing is, I want to say give us a moment to breathe, but yeah, they're talking at each other and the first half of the movie, nothing is happening. No, like, no rising action, just talking. And then when there is action, they're talking nonstop. So I don't know what I want. Uh, what, what I can say about this film, like I, I know that this film is also very light or no, no, actually, I, if I remember correctly, this one is very mixed because some people praise it very highly because of these uh, uh, kind of themes that it presents. And then some or I guess like uh, uh, us where we, we kind of like this was a bit uh, heavy. Yeah, like as we said. The, the first one, if you didn't want to, you didn't have to think deep about the movie to appreciate it. It was pretty to the point. But this one, lots of weird, like, not heavy, like, not he yeah, like heavy, weird dialogue. Not weird, yeah, weird. Heavy, weird dialogue. Not a lot of action to get you hooked in. And, and I don't know, I guess over reliance on the 3d environments in some of the shots mm. yeah i gotta be honest like I, I i have come to the realization that even if some people praise this film i don't think i li like this like the 
Like, and, and it isn't even just because the teams that it presents, it's that the teams could have been presented probably in a better way, like an easier to understand way. But the dog was cute. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I think they did a stellar job on the dog. It was so cute. The biggest question is... Do you have something is, more to say about it, Carol? Yeah, like, why did they make Tobusa to be Christian? Like, what? <laughs> I don't think you nonchalantly quoting the Bible is gonna put you in any other camp. Like, that wasn't in the first movie. <laughs> I think I think that's all I wanted to say. I think I'm out... I'm all out... I'm all ghost out... Ghost in the shell outed. The second movie. Okay. Movie. Thank you all for listening to this episode of the Media Bubble Podcast. Hit that subscribe button of passion. And big thanks to Yasor for the song Comedy. Have a wonderful day.